Hello and welcome to this Swift tutorial video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to work with constraints in your app. So maybe you have designed an awesome app and you have designed it in uh, iPhone 5 with the iPhone 5 dimensions. I'm going to show you how you can take the exact same app and make it beautiful on the iPhone 5, on the iPhone 4S, on the iPhone 6 Plus, on the iPad, how you can make it look great on all devices in both landscape and portrait. And I'm also going to take a look and we are going to take a look at the new function that has been added in Xcode 8, which is vary by traits. So if that is something you want to know how to do, and if you want to make your app look awesome on all devices, just keep watching this video because I will show you how to do exactly that. So in this video, we are going to take a look at restrictions and laying out your app so that it looks great on both an iPhone of all sizes and an iPad of all sizes in all types of rotations. There's only two, but now we're going to, I'm going to show you what you can do and how you can ensure that your apps app looks great either way. So let's make it a single view application and I'm going to call this um, I'm going to make, uh, I'm just going to call this restrictions to make it simple. Language is set to Swift, save it somewhere, and I'm going to make it a full screen. Let's see, we're going to jump over to Storeboard because that's where we're going to be in this tutorial. We're not going to leave the Storeboard, so um, just make yourself comfortable with it. And to start with, I am going to use the iPhone SE or the iPhone 5 <clears throat> and um, also here. So here we are simulating the size of an iPhone SE. And so that we have some element to lay out, we're going to drag in some buttons. And it's going to be a backward button that's going to be in the lower left and it's going to be a forward button in the lower right. And yeah, let, let's say this is a news app where we can read some news and then we're going to have text view. So that our user can read some nice text and we're going to center it. So let's see, it's a type of um, stumble upon app. So the user can click next in order to go to a ne the next blog post or back to go to the previous blog post. And I'm going to show you how to do this uh, in all types of Xcodes and then I'm going to show you what's special about Xcode 8 with their new very four traits as you see down here. But right now I'm just going to say forward and I'm going to say backward. Is it backwards or backward? I'm just going to leave it at backward. Probably backwards then. I'm going to make it a bit bigger and I'm going to make, going to give them some fancy backgrounds, blue, and a text color is going to be white. So as you can see here, we have our app, and if all this app was designed for was an iPhone SE in portrait, then this layout would be great. So let's try to run this application. Let's see. As you can see, here is our app and everything looks great. It's Everything looks awesome and that's because we designed it in an iPhone SE. And now we open it in an iPhone SE, so it's going to look exactly as it did. But let's try to rotate it. And as you can see, it's all messed up. And if we were to run this on an, uh, let's see, iPhone 4 that's, that has a small screen, the buttons would be cut in half and everything would just look, look ugly. So we want to make sure that we place the right restrictions so that it looks equally great on all devices. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use some restrictions as you probably did guess. But before I do that, I just want to show you some options that you've got. And that is uh, you can add missing constraints uh, where Apple takes over and adds some constraints for you. I wouldn't suggest that because you really don't know if it's the optimal way. And then you can also clear all constraints in the view controller by clicking this one. This is pretty useful if you have placed so many restrictions and they all turn out to be wrong. You can just click clear restrictions and all the restrictions are gone in this view controller and you can start from scratch again, <clears throat> which is useful in some cases. And you can also highlight some objects right here 
and let's say you have placed some restrictions on them, you can just click clear constraints and um, you'll be good to go. The constraints are gone and you can start from scratch again. Then you can see we also have the ability to align it um, to all types of stuff. Then we can also keep the aspect ratio. We can uh, make sh do like this so we can highlight both of them in order to make them have equal width, widths, equal heights. And we can also set the height and the width to a certain amount of pixels. And by clicking this, we say that it should have zero pixels from this bottom, uh, from the bottom of the view the, the the bottom of the view controller. If we click this one, it should have zero pixels to the bottom of the view controller. Let's try to just highlight one, and as you can see, zero pixels to the right side, zero to the bottom, and 165 to the left. Um, that's just how many pixels should be as a buffer <clears throat> between the different stuff. Yeah. And last but not least, here you can here you have the option of centering this object horizontally in a container, vertically in a container, and do all other types of cool stuff. But what we are going to do in this app is just use the minimal amount of constraints. So let's click on this one. And we are going to say that it's going to have, first of all, let's make sure that the buttons are equally wide and tall. So let's see, height 30, width, let's set it to 75, that's okay. 75, 30, just remember that. And we might have a slight problem. No, it, it went through all good, all great. So now we're going to try to play some constraints on these buttons. And we're just going to place the minimal amount of constraints on them. So let's first of all highlight them one at a time. And then we're going to say zero pixels to the bottom, zero pixels to the right side. And we're also going to set the width and the height so that the size stays the same. And we're going to do the exact same thing on the other button, equal widths, equal heights and align it to the side and to the button. And as you can see, when we highlight these buttons, everything is blue, and that means everything is tip top. But if it, if it were red, then it means, yo, you, got, uh, you have to change something, this doesn't work. If it's yellow, there's probably a conflict between one or more constraints, and you should probably look into it. So let's try to launch our new app, or it's the same app, but with a better layout, and let's see how the buttons react now. So I'm turning the screen, and as you can see, the buttons are doing it their job, but the text is still pretty messy. So let's try to do something with that. No, let's not try, we're going to do this. Let's highlight it, and then we are going to say, just to try something else, Hor uh, align horizontally in container and vertically in container. So now that's all done and we're also going to say that um, it's going to keep its width and keep its height. But what you could also do is you could simply do like this and do bam, 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 bam and then it would stretch when the size of the screen got larger. So it has to keep this pixel uh, border on each screen size, which means it has to enlarge if it, for example, is run on an iPad. So that is something you could do, but we're just going to say, keep, keep your width and keep your height. Let's try to add those two constraints. It's now also centered in the container. Let's run it and let's see how it looks. So here's our app. Let's try to turn it into landscape. And as you can see, it looks great. Now we have a proper layout, so it's equally functional if you have it in landscape, probably easier to read this way, and it's also functional if you have it in portrait. Now to the Swift 8 goodies. Now we're going to take a look at what's special about Swift 8, and that is this thing right here. Now Apple has introduced a table where you can see which, uh, in which table each device fits, and as you can see on the screen right now, they have four categories. The first one is regular, regular, and this is an iPad, both in portrait and in landscape. Then you have a regular and a compact device, which is an iPhone in portrait. 
then we have a compact compact device or a setting which is iPhone and landscape and then under the category regular compact you have an iPhone 6 plus in landscape and the funny thing about that category is that there's only an iPhone 6 plus in that category so let's try let now I'm going to show you how you can use this new stuff that came along with uh, Xcode 8 so as you can see our restriction makes it so that our, our stuff looks great on no matter which device you use but now let's say that when our user is in let's try to go for the category regular compact let's say when our user is in regular compact which you can see here regular compact now it's compact regular regular compact which is the category which where only iPhone 6 plus exists let's say that for iPhone 6 plus users in landscape you want to add in another feature a special uh, Easter egg let's say so what you want to do is you want to vary for traits and you're going to say vary for width and for height so now you stay in this category that you, you have selected regular compact which is only the iPhone 6s so now you can do pretty much whatever you want with it and I'm going to add another button because they're iPhone 6s users and they're going to get something special so I'm going to write uh, your special button because you're in land land Escape mode which is of course an awesome name because this means that I have to make my button huge which this mode can tackle because it's landscape so this is the special button that they're going to get and it's going to be aligned right here and the background color is going to be red on this one and the text color is going to be white so that is the special button that they are going to get and we just take everything we learned in the previous minutes and we apply it to this one try to do it yourself try to put some restrictions or constraints on it so that it stays nice like it is now but I'm also going to do my best and I'm going to say 21 pixels 21 pixels keep your height and there it is and I'm also going to align it to the button did I do that did I align it to the button no I don't think I did Bam. now everything is blue as you saw before it that thing was red now everything is blue which means everything is good now I can say done varying let's go over to let's say this device and as you can see the button is gone because it's only there for iPhone 6s users in landscape so let's try to run our application on an iPhone 6s plus in order to check what uh, we've got so far so here is our iPhone 6s why Apple had to make this uh, simulator so huge I'm still questioning it's probably because you need a bigger screen they want to sell you a bigger screen but here we go here you have the iPhone 6s as you can see it looks great also on iPhone 6s let's try to rotate it and there we go our special button is right here and our other buttons are beautifully laid out and that is how you use constraints and this special new Xcode 8 stuff with their size classes so I think you can really benefit from this and use this in your apps on all apps so that you can su support either all the devices in all the different rotations thank you for watching this video also make sure that you click the subscribe button so that you stay tuned for my videos to come and once again thank you for watching